The most exciting thing that you're working on right now is that as an engineering manager for Posit, which formerly known as R Studio, um, and the makers of R Studio, you're now working there as an engineering manager, and your project that you're leading the development of is something called Positron, which is described as a next generation IDE, integrated development environment, for data science. So that is what R Studio was many years ago. I mean, I was a I was using R Studio since. 2007 I, that I can kind of at least yeah. since then. Um, and it was definitely my go-to IDE when I was primarily an R developer back then, an R data scientist, although I guess I wouldn't have used the word data scientist in 2007. Yeah, right, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> um, and so with Positron, what are the gaps or limitations that you're addressing that uh, you know aren't covered by things like R Studio, VS Code, or Jupyter Notebooks, which might be the go-to uh, yeah. IDEs for data scientists or software developers today. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I was going to sum up the one, the one gap I feel like that Positron is um, working to address, it's that there isn't something out there right now that can be one place you go to do all your data science. So Positron is not um, is, is not a general purpose IDE. It is specifically an IDE built to do data science. And I um, um I like I come from a like science background and I've always been someone who like wrote code for my data analysis, but I've always really felt um, that I like my needs were a little different than someone who is writing general purpose code, like to build a website or to make a mobile app, like like people who write code to analyze data are different in some real ways. It's not that it's like they're worse coders or, um, or, or, <laughs> or like, <Burn. laughs> no, no, I really Take do that. Data that. Scientists. <laughs> it's not, it's not. Like, I don't think it is that people who write code to analyze data do a worse job writing code. It's that their needs are different and that they're writing code in a different way. So folks who have been uh, for example, who have been uh, using VS Code as a data science IDE have really felt that tension where they're like, this is really general purpose. And instead, I, and I'm trying to kind of customizing it using extensions to fit my needs. So Positron is meant to specifically be a data science IDE. Positron is also like a real... Um, a real, a real driving reason why we've built it the way it is, is that it is a multilingual or polyglot IDE. A lot of the environments you might download to do scientific computing or data science or data analysis are built specifically for one language. So I know all of us have used these. So our studio is an example of one of these, like MATLAB, Spider, like there's a lot of there are a lot of um, you know environments in which you would do data analysis that are just built for one language, and uh, increasingly, I. I just think that's not how many people, that's not how as many people work. Many, many people use multiple languages, whether it's on one project that literally uses multiple languages over the course of a week. They pick up different projects that use different languages or almost certainly on the span of years or your career, you use different languages because things change in our ecosystem. Like you said, you started with R and you know now you others use other languages. There are so many people who use combinations of R and Rust, you know, or they, they work on projects that's like um, Python plus front end kind of technologies, JavaScript, you know, HTML, et cetera, or like almost any data science language plus SQL, right? Like very few people, uh, uh, IDE that is built to use one language, um, for very few people, is that really going to fit all of the needs that they have over the course of a week, a month, or uh, uh, multiple years? So Positron is built with a design such that the front end user phasing features are about the tasks you need to do, like whether that is um, uh, interactively write code, um, whether that's dealing with your plots, whether that's seeing, exploring your data, um, like, like, you know, in a visual way. And then there are backend language packs that provide the engines for those front end features. So it's, um, Positron, it's very early days for Positron. We only made it public about six weeks ago for, as of the day we're recording this. Um, so it is currently shipping with support for Python and R, but it is designed in such a way that other data science languages can be added because the there's a separation between 
the like the front end features and what is driving them. So we look forward to adding support for other languages as they as you know we collaborate with other data science communities or um, or like new things come up right like like new exciting sort of ways of doing data science data science come up. Nice. So the polyglot IDE part to me that makes a huge amount of sense. I get that especially as a contrast to our studio. For people who are writing code as a data analyst or a data scientist, people who are working with data, what is different that we need specifically relative to another software developer? Yeah. So I think one piece that is very different is that the process of writing code is more exploratory, is more interactive. And that's not wrong or bad. That is actually just the fact that instead of getting a spec from a product manager and building a product. Like that's not what data scientists, data analysts do. They, um, you, you start with data and you often don't know what you can or should do in detail until you start that process. And if you have a code writing process that is more exploratory, you need more supports for writing in that interactive exploratory mode. Um, Some things that support that are things like a like truly, truly fully featured interactive console. Of course, that does exist um, in various ways. Like people get at that in various ways, like when they use notebooks or using, say, a Python REPL. But there are, um, if you get to a truly fully featured interactive console where what happens in the console is then reflected in the rest of the where you're working like like uh, say um uh in positron we have what we call a variables pane if you come from our studio you may be familiar with something called like an environment pane where you see all the things you've and it and it updates right like as you change things or the plots that you see you you have them all right there you can scroll through them you can if you change and make a new plot you see it pop up there you, and you you have that um a uh, really interactive way of working. Some of the other things that I know really make a difference for people um, uh, uh, help inside of the IDE where you are working. So you don't, you you know, you're working along, you're like, ah, wait, what, um, what is the function signature? Or like, maybe I want to look at the docs for this. So, so instead of having to get out of a flow state and go somewhere else and read docs, like on the website, like you can really, you can open up help right there and, and copy paste like go right back and forth and stay in that kind of um that kind of flow say another another thing is you're building interactive apps like you need a way to have that right there and that it updates as you change your code versus having some sort of build process going somewhere mm. looking at it a browser it's 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 there's really quite there's really quite a lot that if we put it together, we can make people more productive. I, you know, the company that I work for, Posit, you know, it was the formerly known, the company formerly known as our studio, you know, like Posit, like we do, it, it, it's a really fun place to work as someone who likes thinking about uh, the process that people bring to their tasks. Because I do think like, um, we we are huge believers in code first data science, like not no code solutions, not GUI based tool. Like people who do data work should be writing code, and at the same time, their needs are different. Like their needs are different, and so we can. Um, like pretty much every single thing my my company does is like deeply informed by this belief or like like how deeply we know that um, data practitioners are different and that's good and fine and we can make them more productive by building tools that are specifically for the kinds of tasks they need to do. Very nice. And yes, so not only do you have Code OSS as a kind of a backbone that's providing building blocks for Podges to Tron and offering that kind of extensibility through all the VS Code extensions, like you mentioned Databricks there. Uh, any number of extensions that people yeah. might want to be able to import. Rainbow tabs, whatever you want, it's out there. <laughs> um, in addition to all those things, the Positron proje- project itself is open source. So if people are listening and they want to be contributing, uh, right now at the time of recording, there are 27 people, including I can see your face as one of those GitHub contributors. Listeners can go and they can contribute to this uh, this developing and very exciting project. Yeah, yeah. So um, Positron is licensed such that it is source available. Anyone can come and look at the source, change it, contribute to it. And it is also licensed such that it is free to use for 
um, including for commercial purposes. Like you can use it, um, of course, in academia for personal projects, but you can use it at work. Like it is licensed in such a way that it is free to use in, um, in, um, in, you know, like in your work as a data scientist, data analyst. So it's like free, free to get it. So you can read the code, you know, that's really, um, uh, there's real benefit to that kind of model for uh, building and making software.